Ip Man, how Donnie Yen lives, and what he spends his millions on. The actor's real name is Yen Chitan, and he was born on July 27, 1963 in the southern Chinese city of Guangzhou, also known as Canton. In the Beijing dialect, his surname is pronounced Zhen, and Yen is the Cantonese pronunciation. The father of the family, Kleister Yen, was a violinist, and his mother, Bao Sim Mok, was a vocalist in the Guangzhou Symphony Orchestra. There they met, but two years after the birth of their son, the family split up. The father and the child emigrated to Hong Kong, but the authorities did not allow Mark to move. Only at the age of nine, the boy managed to see his mother again, and the family was finally reunited with the birth of his younger sister Chris. During the separation, Mark mastered martial arts and dreamed of opening her own school in Hong Kong. But she ran into the local mafia there, and the market was already divided. Mark also taught her children martial arts. Therefore, it's not surprising that Chris is also a master of martial arts. And in the thousands, she tried herself in the cinema. The parents also cultivated a love of music in their children. Donnie plays the piano and several other instruments very well, but his main passion remained martial arts. The boy studied specialized books and repeated everything, regardless of style. When he was 11 years old, the Yen family moved to the United States, settling into the suburbs of Boston. Across the ocean, Donnie's father worked as an editor of a Chinese-language newspaper, and Mark finally managed to realize her dream and founded the Chinese Wushu Research Institute. The school quickly became popular, and Donnie became one of the best students. He closely watched movies with his favorite actor fighters, Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, and repeated their tricks. But he treated Chuck Norris with disdain because he could easily distinguish which films show real Chinese martial arts and which are fake. As a teenager, Donnie began practicing Japanese karate, Korean taekwondo and western boxing, as well as hip-hop and breakdancing. He started skipping school and spent time in the infamous combat zone, the criminal district of Boston. The teenager participated in underground MMA fights started leading a nightlife and even joined a gang. To protect her son from gang life, Donnie's mom sent him to Beijing on a four-year training program with the Beijing Wuzhou team. In 1983, Yen decided to return to the United States, intending to establish his own martial arts school in Hollywood. But before leaving, he stopped by Hong Kong so that a friend of his mother, at her own request, would evaluate Donnie's fighting abilities. This friend was the director Yuan Wu Ping, who immediately invited the young man to audition for his new comedy thriller Drunken Tai Chi, also known as Drunken Tai Chi Master. That'll teach you to pull around with me, little boy. Uh, uh, oh, young master, are you okay, sir? That fat bitch, it's only because she waits two times she is. In just five minutes, Yen impressed the crew and was approved for the lead role. The film was released in 1984, but Donnie didn't like the filming process. He was annoyed by the director who explained almost nothing but would yell if he didn't like something. At that time, Yen didn't think for a minute that he could stay in the cinema for a long time, and nevertheless, the collaboration with Yuan Wuping continued. A year later, the film Mismatched Couples was released, on the set of which the actor suffered a severe injury to his right shoulder. It still bothers him to this day. This was followed by two parts of the film Tiger Cage and the action movie in the line of duty 4, Witness, also directed by Yuan Wuping. The master revealed to Donnie the specifics of staging combat scenes and movies, and over the years of cooperation, the actor has worked out his own style of on-screen combat. Then Donnie began to work with other directors and starred in the films Holy Virgin vs. The Evil Dead, Crystal Hunt, New Dragon Gate Inn, Cheetah on Fire, Butterfly and Sword, and but the role in the action movie Once Upon a Time in China 2, where he starred with Jet Li in 1992, became a landmark for Yen. <laughs> <laughs> this work earned Donnie a nomination for the Hong Kong Film Award in the category Best Supporting Actor. In 1993, the actor reunited with Wu Ping on the set of the action movie Iron Monkey. Mm. Have you heard of Hong Kong? Do you want to find him? 
and the film turned out to be a success and was remembered for the fight scene with Shaolin monks which Donnie directed. Ironically, this particular fragment was largely the result of film editing and flying on cables, but almost all other scenes were painstakingly choreographed. Iron Monkey was all the more remarkable because a few years later after its release in Asia, it was acquired by the Miramax Film Studio, reworked, re-recorded, and shown in US cinemas. After the premiere in New York and Los Angeles, the film received critical acclaim from American critics and a prize at the Tortoise Award Ceremony, the annual award of the World Academy of Stuntmen for the best stunts in cinema. In November of the same 1993, Donnie Yen married model Leung Xing Chi, but their family life lasted less than a year. After the breakup, Leung found out that she was pregnant, and in 1995, their son Manziok Yen was born. During this time, the actor starred in the films Hero Among Heroes, Wing Chun, where he also acted as a composer writing the soundtrack, as well as High Voltage. In the latter, he made his debut as a co-director, and in 1996, the sequel to Iron Monkey was released. Next, the audience saw the action films Ballistic Kiss, Shanghai Affairs, and Legend of the Wolf. I hope to remember who I was after seeing you. You can't understand. Every night I have nightmares. It's terrible. I can't remember. All three were directed by Yen himself. The latter is also known as the new big boss and has become a true cult classic. After his divorce from his first wife, Donnie began dating an actress and fashion model from Hong Kong named Joey Meng. Their relationship ended in 2000, but one episode that happened in the late 90s stands out a lot. The young people went to relax in one of the nightclubs in Hong Kong, and when Donnie went to make an order, eight heavily drunk men showed unwelcomed interest in Joey. They were not stopped by the presence of the boyfriend, nor his warning to move away. When the couple left the club, the company continued to chase them on the street and attacked Yen. It was a big mistake, because in the end, all eight men ended up in the hospital with fractures, abrasions, concussions, and bruises. Donnie himself only suffered a minor bruise and was arrested the next day, but was released almost immediately when the police found out it was self-defense. In 2000, the fantasy action film Highlander Endgame with Adrian Paul and Christopher Lambert in the lead roles was released. One day soon, we will all serve very little purpose to Cal except. It was the first American film in which Donnie Yen was cast. He played the immortal Jin Ki and choreographed the fight scenes. The next film, Blade II, was also an American production. And then Donnie returned to his homeland and starred with Jet Li in the fantasy action movie Hero. The movie made Yen popular among the public of mainland China, and when released in wide theaters in the United States, it became one of the most successful foreign language films ever distributed in the American market. Yen's next work was the 2003 American Hong Kong action movie Shanghai Nights with his favorite actor Jackie Chan. I hope there will be more trust between us when I'm emperor and you are the new king. At the same time, the actor's second marriage took place. He married Cecilia Wang. She was previously a model and won the Miss China beauty pageant in Toronto in 2000. They met through mutual friends at one of the parties. Their friends thought it was funny that People magazine called Yen the diamond of fighting movies and Cecilia's parents were engaged in the jewelry business. They turned out to have a lot in common. Both grew up in the West and in the East, into musicians' families, and besides, they had the same taste and views on life. Cecilia didn't watch films starring Yen, but she was impressed by his sense of humor and excellent manners. A few months later, the couple got engaged. Donnie was very anxious about the acquaintance with her father because he had quite strict rules and the age difference between the bride and groom was almost 20 years. But after talking privately for a while, Wang Sr. commonly asked when the wedding date was. Yen said that he was ready to burst into tears with happiness when he heard this. The wedding took place on August 30, 2003 in Canada on the shores of Lake Ontario in Toronto. A year later, they had a daughter, Jasmine, and then a son, James. Donnie often arranges romantic surprises for his wife, gives flowers for every holiday, and on the first anniversary, he sang a serenade of his own composition to his beloved. On the 10th anniversary, he got a tattoo on the lower back with one of the hieroglyphs of her name, meaning poetry. The actor admits that his wife is not just a beloved woman for him, but also a friend, assistant, and business partner. A romantic in life, Yen continued to star in the action films The Twins Effect 2, Seven Swords, SPL, Sha Po Lang, and Dragon Tiger Gate. However, in 2004, he also appeared in one rom-com, Love on the Rocks. In 2007, Donnie played the main role in the film Flashpoint and received an award from the Hong Kong Film Award for choreographing the fights in it. 
The actor worked so hard on the set that he had to go to the doctors every two days to recover physically. A year later, the films Painted Skin, An Empress, and The Warriors were released, but the main hit was the action movie Ip Man, about the invincible Wing Chun master who opened his own martial arts school and became known as Bruce Lee's teacher. You know, Captain Lee, we martial artists have a lot of energy. Sometimes we might be a bit loud, but that doesn't mean we're not civilized. The plot of the film was close to the original biography of Ip Man with added fiction. In terms of combat choreography and biographical data, the crew was advised by the son of Master Ip Chun. Donnie Yen himself visited the city of Foshan, where the master lived and spent a lot of time with his sons, listening to stories about their father, family life, and martial arts. Before the premiere of Ip Man, Donnie's fees were somewhere at the level of a million dollars per film, but after that, the figure increased three and a half times. In 2009, the actor appeared in a documentary about Bruce Lee, the action movie Bodyguards and Assassins, and the historical drama The Founding of a Republic. This film was released to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the foundation of the People's Republic of China, and many Chinese actors were eager to star in it, all be in a cameo role and for free. Donnie Yen played one of the members of the Communist Party, thereby showing his loyalty to mainland China, not Hong Kong. By the way, he was repeatedly criticized for this position and ignoring the ongoing protests in Hong Kong. To one of these comments reproaching him for fighting for justice only on screen, Donnie replied that he was fighting for the Chinese people. It is worth noting that the most profitable fan base of Yen lives in mainland China. After the success of the first film about Ip Man, filming of the sequel began almost immediately. It was released in 2010. <laughs> There was even less truth about the main character in it, but the story was generously favored with action scenes and the fees exceeded the first part almost twice. Filming turned out to be difficult for Donnie, he fainted twice from overwork, and if in the previous film the creators collaborated with the master's son, this time he criticized Donnie Yen, calling him ungrateful. And the fact is that, according to the actor, the success of the films has nothing to do with the martial art of Wing Chun. Other representatives of the martial arts world and Donnie's colleagues joined the criticism. All in all, the actor is known for regularly quarreling with directors, calling them incompetent people, tyrants, and pushovers. He is unashamedly expressive, even towards the eminent masters. In the next few years, the actor starred in China and Hong Kong in such films as 14 Blades, Legends of the Fist, The Return of Chen Zhen, The Lost Bladesman, Dragon, as well as two comedies, All's Well's Ends Well 2011 and 2012. This was followed by the release of Special ID. Together, The Monkey King, Iceman, Kung Fu Jungle, and Inspector Calls, and in December 2015, the premiere of Ip Man 3 took place. <laughs> Donnie explained the long break between the second and third parts by saying that many other films and TV projects about the character were coming out, and the market was somewhat oversaturated. This time, the plot virtually doesn't overlap with the real biography of the Great Master, but the formula for success with a large number of battle scenes worked again, and the film grossed $157 million with a budget of $36 million. Donnie's wife was very worried about her husband because he had to fight Mike Tyson on the set, but her fears were unfounded. On the contrary, Yen broke the famous boxer's finger. Back in 2015, the actor established the Yen's Honor Protection Fund in order to enable celebrities to defend themselves from slander. Donnie won the money with which the organization was founded in court against director Tan Bin. He accused Yen of refusing to work on his project, and he hired bots to threaten the actor's family. In 2016, the actor played the main role in the Netflix adventure thriller Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Sword of Destiny, and in the epic space opera Rogue one. Really? He's praying for the door to open. It bothers him because he knows it's possible. <laughs> Donnie doubted whether to accept the invitation to play in the ladder because he needed to be away from his family for a long time to film it, but his children literally forced him. 
They were so excited that their dad was going to be in a movie with lightsabers and spaceships that he couldn't resist. There in the US, Yen replaced Jet Li, who left the project for unknown reasons in the action-adventure film XXX Return of Xander Cage. The premiere took place in early 2017, and soon the actor returned to his homeland to star in the crime drama Chasing the Dragon and the comedy thriller Big Brother. At the end of 2019, It Meant 4, the finale, premiered. Despite Donnie Yen's statements that he didn't want to return to the series again, it is reported that his fee amounted to $12.8 million. In January 2020, the actor played a policeman who constantly gets into ridiculous situations in the comedy project Enter the Fat Dragon, and in March, the world saw him in the Disney movie Mulan. The actor got the role of Commander Tung, the mentor of the main character. I'm your commanding officer. Fighting will not be tolerated, am I clear? Yes, Commander. In 2021, Donnie Yen appeared in the movie Raging Fire. In 2022, he starred in the fantasy New Kung Fu Cult Master 1 and in the adventure thriller Come Back Home. The release of the action movie The Father and the film adaptation of the popular video game Sleeping Dogs is also expected. But most fans are all waiting for the fourth part of the story about John Wick with Keanu Reeves. The project is at the post-production stage, that is, filming has already ended, and the main director of the combat scenes in this film doesn't hide the fact that he giggled like a boy while working with his childhood idol. Jet Li, Jackie Chan, and Michelle Yeoh consider Donnie Yen the best fighter in modern Asian cinema. He has a sixth-degree black belt in Taekwondo, a black belt in Judo, a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and continues to master new techniques. He also introduces mixed martial arts into Asian cinema. On his social media, the actor shows great athleticism but understands that with age, his capabilities become more and more limited. He is not afraid that one day he won't be able to do what he is capable of doing now and gradually switches to directing, producing, and other work on the other side of the camera. Donnie Yen also speaks several languages. He can speak Cantonese, Mandarin, and English fluently. During the filming of one of the films, he mastered Korean and he can also understand the Shanghai dialect spoken by his wife's family. Donnie's Yen fortune is estimated at 40 million. He is considered one of the highest paid actors in Asia. Movie shooting fees are usually 7 to 8 million, but in addition, Yen has his own clothing brand, DY Edition, and a brand of sunglasses, Donny Eye. Besides, according to media reports, one commercial featuring the actor cost companies approximately $1 million. So he advertised a remedy for back pain, hub lot watches, BMW cars, the Nike sports brand, several video games, and together with his wife, they were the faces of the brand of orthopedic mattresses and pillows, Sinomax. Yen is also involved in several projects. For example, he called for the abandonment of plastic and appeared in an advertisement for the rescue services of Hong Kong. The actor is actively engaged in charity work and in 2012, together with his wife, founded an online platform encouraging people to help others. He is an ambassador of the international organization Save the Children. In 2015, he visited refugee camps in Thailand and in 2020, he donated $130,000 to medical workers in Wuhan. Yen has at least six properties in Hong Kong, each of which, except one, was bought for $1.5 million. The exception is a house in a prestigious area of Hong Kong, which costs $17 million. The media called this mansion the most stylish fortress with a gym and living room with a grand piano standing out in particular. It is reported that this property is 80% owned by Donnie's wife and he owns only 20%. In the garage, the actor has several Lamborghinis, Bentley Continental GT, and Toyota Alphard for family trips, and his closet contains very expensive accessories. He wears a $14,000 Rolex and an Audemars Piguet worth about $70,000, and back in 2016, Donnie bought a horse named Bad Boy who participated in horse racing. The actor himself often attends horse races. Do you like movies with Donnie Yen? Peter Dinklage how Tyrion from Game of Thrones lives, and how much he earns. Peter Hayden Dinklage was born on June 11, 1969, in Morristown, New Jersey, in an ordinary family. His mother, Diane, worked as a music teacher in elementary school, and his father, John Carl, was an insurance agent, but he was out of work for several months a year. The actor has German, Irish, and English blood in his veins, at the time of Peter's birth, the family was already raising a son, Jonathan. In early childhood, the future actor was diagnosed with a rare gene mutation, achondroplasia, 
This is a type of dwarfism in which the growth of limbs slows down. Although the head and body develop according to the norm, it is noteworthy that only Peter was diagnosed with this condition. The rest of the family members are absolutely healthy. At the age of five, the boy underwent surgery to straighten his legs, but doctors couldn't do more. In adolescence, Dinklage's height stopped at four feet five inches, while his weight was 77 pounds. Peter attended the Del Barton Catholic School for boys. Because of his appearance, he was often bullied by his peers, and because of that, he became hot-tempered and unsociable. In an interview, Dinklage admitted that he managed to cope with the pressure of society thanks to his family, who taught him to accept himself. With age, the boy began to treat his condition with humor, which added to his confidence. In the fifth grade, Peter played the main role in the school production of The Velveteen Rabbit and received such a storm of applause that he decided to become an actor. After that, he participated in many productions until graduation. In his spare time, Dinklage developed his talent by performing puppet shows for neighbors with his older brother. By the way, Jonathan also had good acting skills, but his love for music prevailed and he became a professional violinist. An interesting fact is that Bruce Springsteen's manager lived next door to the Dinklages. The famous musician often rehearsed there and according to Peter's family, it was loud and they didn't like it at all. After graduating from high school in 1987, the actor enrolled at the Bennington Theatre College in Vermont, where he chose to major in playwriting. There the guy proved himself as a talented and hardworking student, as well as a wonderful friend. Peter spent his extracurricular time, like all ordinary students, at loud parties with alcohol and music. He even performed with his own punk band, Wizzy, where he played trumpet and was one of the singers. In memory of his care for youth, Dinklage has a noticeable scar along his face, which he received during one of his concerts, jumping on stage. In 1991, the young man graduated from college. After that, he and his best friend Ian Bell went to New York, where they planned to open a theater company. The guys didn't have much money, so they rented a cheap apartment in Brooklyn with a horde of rats and no heating. For a long time, Peter couldn't find a job. Theater groups didn't hire him, and movie producers only offered him to play leprechauns or gnomes. He refused to take them on principle, since most of them mocked people with dwarfism. After numerous casting failures, Dinklage got a job at a data processing company but the money he earned was barely enough to pay the rent. Peter admitted that at that time he could often afford only a pack of chips a day. In the end, the guys were evicted for non-payment, after which Peter had to ask friends for a place to stay. Soon Dinklage got lucky and received a role in an independent movie. In 1995, the aspiring actor made a screen debut in the comedy drama Living in Oblivion, where his partner on the set was Steve Buscemi, who became his good friend. Do you know anyone who's had a dream with a dwarf in it? No! I don't even have dreams with dwarves in them. The only place I've seen dwarves in dreams is in stupid movies like this. In the film, Peter actually played himself, an actor who, due to dwarfism, is offered only stereotypical roles. However, despite the fact that Dinklage's acting received high reviews from critics, he couldn't find an agent. In 1996, Peter starred in Mickey Rourke's action movie Bullet, but was not even listed in the official credits. In subsequent years, he only received minor roles in low-budget films, among which the most notable were Safe Men, Human Nature, just the Kiss, 13 Moons, and the TV series Third Watch. In 2003, Dinklage appeared in the drama The Station Agent, where he was cast as a reclusive dwarf, doomed to endless ridicule by others. Really angry? About what? Being a dwarf. 
This role was a real breakthrough in his career and brought him many nominations for film awards, including the Screen Actors Guild Award for outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role. In the same year, the actor starred in the Christmas comedy film Elf and in the drama Tiptoes, where his partners on the set were Gary Oldman, Matthew McConaughey, and Kate Beckinsale. Peter also appeared on the stage of the New York Public Theater, playing the titular role in Shakespeare's Richard III, which was his longtime dream. Subsequently, Dinklage performed in many more plays. His love of the theater played a crucial role in the actor's personal life. Back in the late 90s, he met a theater director, Erica Schmidt, and a strong friendship arose between the young people based on mutual interest in dramatic art. And over the years, it turned into love. In 2004, Peter proposed to his beloved, and a year later, the couple had a modest wedding. In 2005, Dinklage starred in the TV series Life As We Know It and Entourage, the drama The Baxter, the comedy surviving Eden, and in the drama Lassie, where he played an artist of a traveling circus. Then his filmography was replenished with the TV series Threshold and Nip Tuck, the romantic fantasy Penelope, and the crime drama Find Me Guilty, which also starred Vin Diesel. Despite the fact that the film failed at the box office, Peter's acting received high reviews from critics. In 2007, Dinklage played a mad scientist in the family fantasy Underdog and also starred in the British comedy Death at a Funeral as Peter, who appears at a funeral ceremony and declares that he was the lover of the deceased, demanding money from his relatives for silence. How do you think that makes me feel? No, I'll tell you how that makes me feel. It, cheap. Like a cheap slut. Don't you think I deserve something? The film became so popular that three years later, they made an American remake where Peter again played the same character, only with a different cast. In 2008, the actor appeared in the movie Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, where he played the dwarf Trumpkin. After the release of the film, critics unanimously stated that Dinklage failed to eliminate the stereotypical image, and he himself considered participation in this project a great disappointment. Then Peter's filmography was replenished with such works as the sitcom 30 Rock, the drama St. John of Las Vegas, the drama I Love You Too, the thriller The Last Rites of Ransom Pride, and the dark comedy Pete Smalls is Dead, where the man also acted as an executive producer. In 2011, Dinklage appeared in the romantic comedy drama A Little Bit of Heaven, as well as in the acclaimed series Game of Thrones, based on the series of novels, A Song of Ice and Fire by George Martin. What you see is a dwarf. If I had been born a peasant, they might have left me out in the woods to die. Alas, I was born a Lannister of Casterly Rock. Things are expected of me. It is noteworthy that Peter became the first approved actor who didn't even participate in the casting. In the series, Peter played Tyrion Lannister, nicknamed the Imp who led a rampant lifestyle. After the premiere of the first season, Dinklage's photo appeared on the cover of Rolling Stones. Playboy magazine called him a sexy man, and GQ awarded him the title of Stud of the Year 2011. The actor himself is skeptical about these titles, as he doesn't believe that in reality, women will be interested in people with dwarfism. Subsequently, Peter starred in seven more seasons of Game of Thrones, until 2019. In an interview, he admitted that when he got his hands on the script, he started reading it from the end to make sure that his character would live to see the last episode. At the same time, with each season, the popularity of his character only increased, and eventually he took second place in the ranking of the best characters of the series, second only to his on-screen sister, Cersei. At some point, I want to hear how a Night's Watch recruit became King of the North. As long as you tell me how a Lannister became hands of Daenerys Targaryen. Long and bloody tail. To be honest, I was drunk for most of it. By the way, Lena Headey, who played Cersei, 
is a longtime friend of Peter, and he advised the directors to invite her to the role. It's worth mentioning that among the actors of the series, Peter received the largest number of awards, four Emmys, a Golden Globe Award, a Saturn Award, and a Screen Actors Guild Award. And the New York Times called Peter Dinklage one of the eight actors who turned television into art. Game of Thrones has become the most successful HBO project of all time, as well as the most expensive in the fantasy genre. According to some reports, Peter's fee per episode was $150,000 in the first two seasons, $300,000 in the third and fourth seasons, half a million in the fifth and sixth seasons, and the last season brought him $1.1 million per episode. Thus, Dinklage's total income from filming in the series exceeded $30 million. In between Game of Thrones seasons, the actor participated in other projects, voicing cartoon characters Scrat's Continental Crack Up Part 2, Ice Age Continental Drift, Rick and Morty, and Angry Birds Movie 2. He also voiced Tyrion in the video game based on the series. In addition, Peter appeared in several films, in 2013, his filmography was replenished with the drama A Case of You and the comedy Nights of Badassdom. And in 2014, he appeared in the dramas Lowdown and The Angriest Man in Brooklyn, as well as the fantastic action movie X-Men Days of Future Past, where he played the evil scientist Boulevard Trask. By the time you see the need for my program, it'll be too late and you will have lost two wars in one lifetime. It's worth noting that Dinklage wanted to star in this film so much that he agreed to the role without even reading the script. His acting received high reviews from critics and he himself was nominated for the MTV Channel Award for Best Villain. In 2015, Peter starred in the drama Taxi and in the fantastic comedy Pixels, which was criticized and was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Anti Award. In 2016, Dinklage, together with his business partner David Ginsberg, founded a film production company, Estuary Films. In the same year, his filmography was replenished with the comedy The Boss, and in the following year, he appeared in the detective Rememory, the dramas Three Christs and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, starring Francis McDormand and Woody Harrelson. You two boyfriend and girlfriend? Early stages, you know. Is that right? We had a couple dates. The latter picture received high reviews from critics, and the creators, along with the actors, received many awards, including two Oscars and four Golden Globes. Despite the fact that Peter himself didn't receive anything for his role, the audience noted his image as one of the most memorable. In 2018, the actor played the main role in the fantastic drama I Think We're Alone Now, and in the biographical film My Dinner with Hervé, which tells about the last days of the French actor, Hervé Villachez. Being famous is like being drunk, except the whole world is drunk with you. By the way, in both films, Peter was also a producer. In the same year, Dinklage appeared as a giant dwarf in the superhero movie Avengers, Infinity War, which became one of the highest grossing films in history. What happened here? You were supposed to protect us. Asgard was supposed to protect us! Asgard is destroyed. In 2019, Peter played a cameo role in the comedy Between Two Ferns, the movie. And next year he starred in the thriller, I Care A Lot. He also voiced one of the characters of the cartoon, The Crudes, A New Age. In 2021, Dinklage appeared in the title role in the musical, Serrano, based on the plot of the stage play of the same name, the script of which was written by his wife. Freak. Is that it? Have you exhausted your dictionary of scorn? Interestingly enough, he literally begged Erica to choose him for this role, as he dreamed of singing on stage. However, unlike the original work, the disadvantage of the main character is not a huge nose, but a small stature. For his brilliant performance in the musical, Peter was nominated for a Golden Globe. 
Now Peter's acting career is still on the rise. In the summer of 2022, the comedy American Dreamer premiered. Also the filming of the movies She Came to Me, The Toxic Avenger, and Brothers has already been completed. And The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and Hit Pig are at the stage of filming. To date, Dinklage's fortune is estimated at $25 million, which includes film royalties and advertising contracts. In 2017, Peter starred in an advertising short film of the beer brand Estrella Dam. And in 2018, he rapped in a commercial for Doritos and Mountain Dew with Morgan Freeman. The actor also advertised Cisco's The Network Intuitive, the funny thing is that Dinklage, having become famous, signed such a serious contract because at the beginning of his career, he was only offered the role of elves in Christmas advertising, which he refused. The celebrity carefully hides his personal life from the public. Peter doesn't have social media accounts and is very angry when paparazzi are watching his family. The media learned that in December 2011, his wife gave birth to his daughter, whose name they don't disclose. And in September 2017, another child appeared in the family, whose gender and name are also unknown. According to some reports, the children don't inherit their father's condition. Dinklage and his family lived in Manhattan for a long time, where he could often be seen walking his dog or riding a scooter. A few years ago, the couple moved to a country house with a huge garden, which Peter enjoys taking care of. But all this remains hidden from the cameras and the prying eyes of fans. The actor owns a Chrysler 300, which was designed specifically for his condition. For obvious reasons, he also orders custom-made outfits or buys clothes in children's stores. Dinklage has been a vegetarian since the age of 16, when he needed to eat meat on the set of Game of Thrones, instead of real meat, they used tofu or just fake food. Peter is also a member of several animal rights organizations. One, he voiced the video Face Your Food on behalf of PETA, promoting eating vegan food for ethical reasons. The actor was repeatedly asked if he, as a celebrity, wanted to represent the interests of people with dwarfism. Dinklage replied that even now, he doesn't always manage to put up with his condition. So it would be hypocritical to try to help people cope with something that he can't cope with himself. However, he still took advantage of his popularity to draw attention to one incident. In 2012, in his speech at the Golden Globe ceremony, he mentioned the actor with dwarfism, Martin Henderson, who was thrown by a drunk rugby player at a New Zealand bar. As a result of the fall, Henderson suffered spinal damage and eventually died of his injuries in 2016. Peter became world famous after the release of Game of Thrones, but his filmography is full of other outstanding works. What movie with Peter Dinklage do you like the most? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.